Welcome to part 4 of the Core 2 video tutorials. Up to this point, we've been using Core 2 in what's called standalone mode, meaning that it's running on its own and not as a plugin. One of Core 2's greatest benefits, however, is its ability to seamlessly integrate with a sequencing host. Let's take a look. We saw earlier how the Core 2 browser makes it easy to find the right sound. This is perhaps most important when using Core as a plugin and your preferred sequencer. Core will help you find the sound that will gel best with your song. Here we have Cubase loaded, but bear in mind that Core will run as a plugin in any sequencer that supports VST, audio units, or RTAS plugins. Okay, let's listen to our track to get a feel for it. <laughs> As you can hear, we have the groundwork already laid for a great song. What's missing is a lead sound. Let's say we want to add a simple melody. This is where Core 2 really shines, because I will specify exactly what kind of sound is needed to maintain the vibe of our track. I'm going to add the lead sound to this instance of Core, which already contains the arpeggiated sound you may have heard a moment ago. So I'll start by selecting Synth Lead. Now, I want something that fits nicely and doesn't overpower the other instruments in the song, so I'm going to click on Soft to match the existing timbre. I also don't want to end up with a sound that's thin and dry, but matches the highly affected sound of the track, so I'll click on Processed. Finally, I'll click on Ambient Electronica, since we have a more down-tempo type of piece, and I want something that is likely to work with this feel. Now this has narrowed our sounds down quite a bit. I'll choose this patch, called Italo Friend, and drop it into the sound channel next to our existing arpeggio. As we saw in another tutorial, you can have multiple sounds play in parallel, and that's exactly what we've done here. But I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to change the sound we just added so it only responds to MIDI channel 2. This will allow me to trigger this sound from its own MIDI track inside my sequencer without affecting any other sounds. Core is very useful for creating multi timbral setups like this. Okay, let's hear what we have. Let's hear it in the context of the track. This has got us pretty close, but it's just a little too bright for the texture of the track, so I'm going to reduce the cutoff parameter on the control page for the sound a little bit. Perfect. I could continue to add more sounds to this instance of Core, triggering each on its own MIDI channel. What's more, I could also build creative effect routings for each sound without having to leave Core, as we saw in an earlier tutorial. This makes Core's bussing and mixing options entirely self-contained. But if I really needed to, I could also send each sound to its own channel in my sequencer's mixer for further processing there. In the previous example, we used Core in a multi timbral manner. In other words, we had more than one sound loaded into a single instance of Core, each on its own MIDI channel. There is another way to work with multiple sounds in a sequencer, and that is to load each sound into its own dedicated instance of Core. In this sequencer project, I currently have three different instances of Core loaded. One of these instances, for example, contains the drum beat heard in our song, as well as one of the pad sounds in the background. 
The good news is that I don't have to interact with the sequencer nor use the mouse if I want to reach out and touch these individual instances of core, because it can all be done via the core controller. When in sound mode, pressing and holding the F1 button brings up a matrix depicting all of the current instances of core. Pressing the up-down cursors will switch between them. From here, I could make changes to the control pages for the currently selected instance, engage various sound variations and morph between them, or any of the other sound-related operations we've seen demonstrated in previous tutorials. This ensures that you can quickly get to the sounds you want and easily make the necessary adjustments without breaking your workflow. As we've seen, core sounds provide plenty of opportunity for hands-on control via control pages and sound variations. Sooner or later, you're likely to want to record these knob movements in a sequence. This is commonly referred to as automation. Automating parameters in Core 2 is easy. Let's see an example in Cubase. We'll automate some parameters on the lead sound we found previously. I will first enable automation in Cubase. I'll then dial in the sound variation page in Core so we can record some morph movements. Now it is simply a matter of playing our sequence and moving some knobs in Core 2. Great! Now let's disable Cubase's automation write mode and play back the result. Here you can see the actual automation that we recorded a moment ago. And we could fine tune it from here, correcting any mistakes if necessary. Here you can see that I already have a lot of automation in this project, mainly the morphing of sound variations and other core sounds in our song. This is partly what is giving the song its intrinsically organic feel, and that's the power of automation, leveraging Core 2's extensive hands on control possibilities and making them a permanent part of your song. This concludes our tutorial on using Core in a sequencer. Be sure to check out the next tutorial to discover the many ways Core 2 makes live performances easy.